All right, next I want to talk about the object fit property. The object fit property is something that's been fairly recently introduced and it works in conjunction with the display flex property. I have a couple of divs here and then a paragraph. I've got the same image placed inside of each one, so there's a div tag with an image tag, a div tag with an image tag, a paragraph with an image tag. In the two divs, I have specified that I want a specific width. So the top one is 150 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. The next one is 500 pixels wide by 200 pixels tall. And then the paragraph is just using the, ori the original aspect ratio for the image my red lines here. These are the borders around the div, so you can see that my image is actually spilling out from here. The height is being contained by the height that we've provided, 100 pixels, 200 pixels, and it's taking a strip through the middle of the original image. So there it is. Now up at the top, I have display flex for both of these divs. They both have the class wrap. The second one has the class big just to override the height and width. Display flex is required for object fit to work properly. The default value for object fit is none, and that means just display the image it normally would be the way it normally would be displayed. You can see that the aspect ratio hasn't been changed. The text here is the same size in all three of them. It's just one strip of the image. Now inside of here, if I change object fit there's four possible values. There's none, fill, cover, and contain. With fill, we're stretching it, and we're going to change, or we could change the aspect ratio of this. Now, if I say fill, I want the whole image, top to bottom, to fit inside of here, 100, and here, 200 pixels. So it's going to be squashed a little bit, squashed a lot for this one, and then it goes to fill the entire row here. That's what this is doing. A div is display block. We're changing it to display flex, which means it wants to fill up the whole container. It's going to be the same width as everything else. And the image is being stretched across that entire size. If we said, no, I don't want to ruin the aspect ratio. I just want to cover whatever this is. I have here my display flex element goes across the whole page. And I'm filling this. I'm filling this one as well, but I'm not messing with the aspect ratio. So that's the difference between cover and fill. Contain goes the other way. It wants to shrink things down to fit inside of these dimensions. So if I say contain, now it's shrunk down to fit inside of here. But you notice it's also way outside of the box. Here's my containing box. It's way over here, my containing box, and it's spilling out this side. It's actually placed in the middle of the page. When you've got display flex, that's your default, is aligning something in the middle of this whole area. Despite the fact that I've set the width and height to this, display flex says, okay, what's my whole space? I'm going to align something in the center of everything. To get around that, we're going to say align items. This is having to do with display flex, and there's the default center. I want to say flex start. There we go. Now my image is in the top right corner, or the top left corner rather, top left corner here as well. It's spilling out underneath everything else, but that's where the image is being placed. It's that top corner, the top corner. It's aligned there, both to the left and to the top, right there. Now, it's kind of ugly. It's spilling out everywhere. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to say overflow hidden. That will truncate things to the aspect ratio that I've got here. Where the borders are, now the div is truncating this. Now we can go back if we want, say fill. Well, it is filling it. If I say I want to cover it, yeah, it's covering it so it doesn't have to do anything. If I want to contain it, well, yep, yeah, it's contained inside there. So different combinations of the align items and the overflow the width and height that you provide, and then these properties right here for none fill, cover, and contain will change the way your object is rendered. And changing this, you know, flex end. Now this is aligned against the far side of the screen right here, and we're seeing that part of it.
flat to start. Overflow hidden. If you want it to spill out, you can, but you probably want to apply overflow hidden with this as well. Now, my other one down here, just a, a good rule to follow when you're placing images on the page. If you want to modify something, like I want to shrink this image down, I can provide a width, and that's great, but I don't want to provide a width and a height unless I know exactly what the aspect ratio is. Because if I was to add a height in here, this is what I end up with. And this is kind of what object fit was, part of what it's trying to fix is doing things like this. We don't want to usually squash this. Object fit fill does things like this. It says, okay, I'm going to ignore the aspect ratio of the image, use the aspect ratio of the containing object. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave the height set to auto, which is the default value. It's the same thing as not having it there at all. And that's what we've got. Now, there is another related property called object position, and you can use that to align where the image is going to show up. Object position is going to look at the horizontal and the vertical positioning of this object within the space. Now, right now, our image is already being shrunk down and clipped off, so there's not really much to show here. I'm also saying I want to align this thing flex start. Now, if I remove that, I'm not using the flex box property to position it. Now I'm going to use these things, the object position. Uh, contain has got it shrunk down, and it's fitting inside of here. Aligning this to the center, if I say fill, there we go, back to messing up the aspect ratio. Cover, there we go. And let's say I want to align this to the right bottom. There we go. Now this is positioning more down to the right side and here. Again, it's using the width of the whole thing. It's pushing this against the, the right edge of the entire space. Uh, we can say right top to change. Okay, now we've got the top edge is aligned to the top edge here. Going back to the bottom, now the bottom edge is aligned to the bottom here. Now the left edge is aligned to the left edge here. Now the right edge is aligned to the right edge off the screen a little bit. It's over here. The flex is going to take up all of this space right here. So it's going to go up to about this point right here. And that's what this is aligned against. So object, object position allows you to move the object around inside of the space that you have allotted as an alternative to using the Flexbox align items. So I encourage you to give those properties a try, experiment with them. That's really the only way to get comfortable with using them is to just put some different images out there, play around with the object position to move it around and show different parts. Remember that you've got overflow hidden and you've got align items, uh, not align content, but align items, which will allow you to play with these things a little bit more as well. There we go. I'll leave that inside the code. So all this will be in the code gist that's down in the comments. Have any questions? Please feel free to leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching.